Hey, it's Andre and it's time for another unboxing. It is the Avios Bushmeal version two. That is fantastic news. It's been about five years, four and a half, five years since the very first Avios Bushmeal came out. Uh, you are looking at some footage from 2017 as I was really enjoying this aircraft. And if you're a friend of the channel, you know I have a soft spot in my heart for high wing, twin motor, just really fun aircraft for whatever reason i've always enjoyed a twin prop motor and that started way back from some of my earliest scratch builds to the sky mule and the bush mule and now we have bush mule version 2 which does actually feature some upgrades and i'll go through them really quickly with some of the new features um, they've come in and they reinforced the wing bolts which is fantastic news so if you are uh pulling the wings off for transport there's going to be less issues there um new props uh better more efficient prop system which is really nice uh the main gear have actually been pulled back a tiny bit so those are it's better ground handling you can't do your tilt and run around too much anymore like he used to be able to pop that thing up and have a little bit of fun nose gear has been redefined a little bit or redesigned a tiny bit so that's really good news and it's got a brand new scheme i've looked in the box once i think it looks pretty smoking hot so i'm pretty excited about that um and we'll, we'll jump into the specs while i've got my phone out so i can look at it uh wingspan 1500 millimeters you've got a length of 10,095 millimeters and a weight about 2,250 grams uh, and battery wise I've been told that you can run a 3,000 3,000 to 4,500 4S now I've got some 3,300s and I got a 5,000 milliamp 4S pack I'm gonna try and the other thing I also know and I asked about too when I was having my discussions with Hobby King about the airplane was 3S and I've been told a 3500 to 5000 3S will work as well and the really nice thing about that fact is that you can probably slow the airplane down a tiny bit that was always my concern with the version 1 bush mule compared to my sky mule the thing was a rocket ship nothing wrong with it but there's something about watching a twin twin prop plane come in for slow touch and go landings and this thing is a uh, who to do that with so I'm really excited about that so I will actually be trying when I go flying uh, with the V2 I will be trying my 3300s my 5000s just to see if it can handle the weight I know I'm gonna be up above my the weight spec I think tiny bit and then definitely gonna try the 3s probably gonna fly it on the 4s anyhow just because having that punch is really good all right spec wise uh, carrying over from the original design you get two 30 amp ESC's with reversing uh, which is really cool particularly if you're on floats in the water in the snow or even on the ground actually I'll try be testing that with the new landing gear uh, because hopefully the nose doesn't pop up uh, motors are uh, they are times two 35 36 millimeter uh, Aerostar 850 kV motors which were rock solid so excited about the new props and everything CG should be anywhere from 50 to 60 millimeters from the leading edge like the version 1 and you're going to want a fairly big receiver. I'll be flying mine off an FR Sky 8 channel and I've got a feeling uh, based on memory and, and experience with the V1 you fill up all of those channels right away. Let's get inside this box and have some fun see what the new Bushmill version 2 looks like. Big box! Oh love the red uh it is definitely a vibrant color and as you can see everything is packaged and shipped really well as we are expecting from something of the uh, from abio so elevator look at the size of that book. elevator that's nice Main landing gear, two new props, nose gear, skis, which I'll be flying off because it is winter here right now. So this aircraft will definitely be seeing a little different conditions than it's probably used to. Uh, wing struts and 
the moment we've been really keen to see is the main fuselage. Ooh, I like. I like, I really do like the new color scheme. Uh, it's quite sharp. I love all the windows and everything. There's quite a lot of nice provisions in this aircraft. Um, you get a hatch, a big enough hatch to get in there and access all the wiring. Uh, and I'm already seeing, already noticing they are, uh, they've done a few things differently on the inside where there is now a solid plate on the inside. So they've taken in some, some work and some effort to kind of upgrade the body and the uh, where the landing gear go in and give it a little bit more reinforcement. I don't remember if the tail is a little bigger, but there's the rear hatch. And I definitely appreciate the stickers on the bottom. It's kind of nice. Now, remember, you can put this multiple cameras in this thing, and there's provisions for like an FPV spot. You can put it on the nose, the canopy. It has another canopy if you want to go FPVing with it and everything. Uh, versus the normal one uh, and actually yes look at that actually I have to say they've been doing their homework check out the big plate uh, in the nose uh, so that's a reinforcement part so they're actually really taking note of all a lot of the issues that we were experiencing with like the version one uh, so they've reinforced the nose really well with a plate and I understand that the, from from reading everything the the gearing for the nose gear has changed or the linkage and everything and obviously um, oh another point I forgot in the, in the updates the servos have all been swapped out for better, more powerful servos. So that's really nice to see and read. So they are paying attention, and that's the whole purpose behind a V2 aircraft, obviously. Slight refinement, slight upgrades to make it that much better. All right, here's the kit bag full of everything you need to assemble this airplane. So those are your spinners. You got two tail link pieces. Solid metal fittings for the uh, the wings, and then various uh, that looks like your nose gear, and then your various wing struts and screws and everything. Nice and clean, and they've gone with a different hook as I re if I'm recalling. Uh, you obviously have your one aileron and then another connector just for your lights, but it looks like they've gone with a slightly different fitting uh, hookup system for the wings, which is really nice to see. Make sure you work in all your parts, give them a little bit of a wiggle, get that foam woken up so the hinges so they work, and I like, I do like the red. This guy sits in. Just giving this thing as much downforce, but being gentle. Draw it in. I'm seeing just a tiny bit of a gap, but I think once I start putting some screws through that, they will lock into place really well. The tail goes in with two of these longer, narrow threaded screws. So they go in through the bottom tail and up. And then obviously these two fittings here are for your tail section. So it's pretty simple, pretty clean, nice that uh, you can actually, if you need to transport this, the real nice thing is without gluing it together, uh, you can get in there and transport the entire thing if you have to take off, particularly the tail section, uh, which is still nice to know. Drawing them in little by little. Seating in your rudder, really nice and gentle. There you go, got a bit of bite. Doesn't have to be crazy tight. Flip this thing over, make sure it's seating in good. And I'm just looking to draw in all that foam and make sure everything is seated evenly. Right now I'm seeing a bit of gap. So 
I'm just trying to push the tail section down cleanly without doing carnage, which is always the, uh, the key and objective. The nice thing, you're going to like this if you have a version one bush mule and you need uh, and you need some some parts. Uh, version 2 is quite compatible with version 1. Obviously, aesthetic-wise, stuff has changed. So it's your opportunity to customize the look and feel and everything. But I kind of like the red, to be honest. But uh, if you need parts for your V1 bush mill, suddenly, you know, options are available, particularly for the canopy and any of the control surfaces. Because fundamentally, really, the only aesthetic change or, or design change is really where that rear gear is fitting on the uh, on the new fuselage. A little minor changes to the nose gear. So so if you need bits and pieces for your V1, now you can get them. I'm working my way uh, between the front and, uh, and these two uh, screw points and just drawing in the rear stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer, the rudder into the foam and just working it in incrementally. You can hear it as it just starts sitting in better and better as I work it in slowly. So just take your time. There's uh, definitely use a uh, screwdriver, not a power tool. Bush mills are already taking, uh, taking shape. So look at that. I, yeah, I liking the, uh, the red. Uh, noticing inside, uh, as per normal Avio standards, um, the majority of the wires are labeled, so that's really nice to see. So there's one here marked cabin, and that is your, as you guessed it, that is your rear hatch. Um, so that'll be on my channel 7, I believe. And then there's rudder, elevators marked. Uh, there's a Y connector on the nose gear, so if you want to do a separation and run them on two different channels, you know, and love, love that access. Look at that packaging. Now, uh, there's a lot of attention to detail uh, when it comes to the center section. So in the center section, you have uh, the flaps, you've got your power systems, you have your ESCs, which are sunk right into the, um, they are sunk right inside of the, uh, uh, the, the setup and everything, uh, the nacelles and all your wiring loom. And the loom is kind of big because you've got your, connection points for your lights and your ailerons, your flaps on a Y connector, the reverse for the ESCs, the main control on the ESCs. So it is a lot of wiring coming in from the center point. So let's open up the wiring loom, let's dump this thing in and go to work. So it's a single wire uh, for the battery, which is fantastic. Everything is on bullet connectors. All the other components are on Y connectors, which is really nice and makes everything really quick and easy to go in. If you want to run your ailerons on separate channels, uh, you can work your way into the loom and separate them. But at this point, you're looking at almost a nine channel receiver. So eight channels is pretty good as far as I'm concerned. And that allows you to get your lamp and everything. And the reason I'm going, actually I'm using a uh, FR Sky uh, 8XR, uh, yeah, no, X8R, <laughs> and the reason is that because I can get in there and I can use things like the S-Bus port and uh, the RSSI and I can uh, pull voltage off those and spread out the voltage for the lighting gear on this aircraft, so, all right, let's put this wing on. The wing sits down with uh, two of the long bolts, which is really nice to see. And then the end bolts are uh, also in here. And then you'll need those little tabs, these guys. And they have a shape. Uh, so that's something to note. They uh, There's a little bend in them. Uh, so I th there you go. And it'll be kind of obvious. I know I marked it when I put my, when I did the other aircraft. So something to pay attention to is how they are shaped and how the wings sit. So a little bit of up. All right, so the center section goes in pretty easy. You just dump that down. There are two, uh, two mounting points that go into the fuselage. Locating pins, I guess. And those go in. Make sure all your wiring harness clears. So I'm gonna open up my hatch here. Grab my harness. Pull all of that forward. 
Uh, yeah, I have a wire there snag. There you go, got it. And then just keep dumping that down and take off that hatch. Make sure all your wires are clear. That way everything sits nice and flush. I don't think I have anything caught. Nope, it is good inside. Perfect. All right, two screws and that center wing piece, the three-piece wing, will be located and locked and ready for connections. Again, spread your screws down nice and evenly. There's no need for power tools. Just take your time, push them down, and everything will lock in and settle in really well. Just make sure you have no servo wires interfering with anything. Plastic top, which is really cool. There's even a spot over here if you want to pop that panel off, if you want to run any kind of FPV. I've only enough, I've not flown any of these aircraft in FPV. I always just found the, uh, the mass too much, and so rather not take the risk. There you go, number one, nice and flush. Number two, nice and flush. That is in. That is strong, that is clean. Oh, it's coming together really quickly. I do like this airplane. All right, so these metal tabs, uh, they go in here, one and two. And then you have your aileron and your lamp. I appreciate when labeling is done on an airplane, I will have to say that. All right, time to put on this wing. Uh, it is a really nice, clean setup. You've got one servo connector for your lights. That's your landing light on your wing light and then your nav light uh, and then your aileron, obviously, your giant aileron. And I'm just gonna move that control surface and get that warmed up. Uh, you've got two screws that go into the mounting point. You've got your wing strut piece, well actually you have your strut connector there, your little wing spar connector. Uh, there is a spar buried into the wing as well, so it's, uh, I don't know if you can see it with all the light here, so it is, oh there you can see the little channels right through there, so it's, it is a solid wing like the version one, uh, but they've improved how they mount this up and everything. So the biggest thing is to get these connectors in and then work everything back into the pockets nice and cleanly. Make sure your servos are aligned, so yellow with yellow, red with red, so single power ground, easy. And then there's my lamp connector. Just feed everything into the pocket. It's a bit of a handful, but it will go together nicely. There we go. All right, so take your time, work your way over top of the, the hinge or the, the seat. Make sure your servo wires are sliding in cleanly and then push everything home. It does take a little bit of finessing, but take your time. There's like no rush. There's no need to over torque anything or push anything too crazy. There's lots of room in here. Ah, nice and seated much better so once i got the uh the the various wires the various lighting wires and the and the aileron control into the the hole it slipped in really well and then drop in two little screws i find just a little screwdriver a little uh hex driver to help push the uh, servo wire and the uh, the light wire into position gets you a little further along and then you just support and push the uh, the wing over top of the uh, hinge there we go nice and just very gently rock it into position sweet Look at that. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, good. A little bit of pressure. There we go. Nice. I don't tend to actually take apart 1500 millimeter airplanes. They, uh, they fit pretty good into my little car, my normal sedan. Uh, 
and 1500 millimeters is not huge. If you get something into the two millimeter range, or that gets a little crazy. All right, those are in. That looks good. That's clean. Uh, obviously, I'll verify once I hook in all the controls. All right. Like I said, this is not a crazy, it's it's a fast build, which is really nice. And so far, I haven't needed any glue or anything. So that's been really useful. So you will have to slice your graphic and then you just simply drop the landing gear in. There is only one way they go in. And then there are a couple pieces of fittings that you'll want and some washers. Uh, the mule does, the bush mule does, uh, you can order a set of floats which would be pretty darn cool. Uh, but I will be flying mine initially. Actually, I might do the landing gear, but I'll probably end up putting her onto the supplied skis uh, for uh, winter flying. And like that, your landing gear is done. Uh, it's just two plates, four screws with some washers, and in your gear goes. Simple, clean. that so the nose gear on the inside requires a fitting of two pieces this obviously collar goes in and connects on the inside and then this goes to your servo so it's a nice little hook system comes up so that's really simple and then while I've got it upside down actually I will do the uh, the wing struts so I can flip it over and then it'll be done with that so the wing struts come in two bag a bag each they're nice aluminum and one hooks onto the uh, the bottom of the land they hook onto the bottom of the landing gear and then the other one tenches onto the wing and I think there you go a little bit of pressure a little bit of popping and then you do two tabs I'll put a little pressure on to make those work there you go The bush mule is starting to take up more real estate. Wow. My servo is on this side, and so that arm drops down. This guy is notched. Yep. So your landing gear orientation is how I have it now. So that spring is the way the wheel is. It's back a little bit. There's a notch on the inside, and that corresponds to this piece here, which is your control arm. To set up your assembly on the nose gear, here's what I recommend. Turn that wheel 90 degrees. The receiving end on the nose gear off the servo has a notch, so it's pretty simple, and there you go. Uh, there is no need to worry and try and work with a little Allen key. Just pop the nose off, and then turn that 90 degrees, lock it in place, and then drop your uh, the servo connection into the airplane, and presto, that is done. Now that the nose assembly is set up, we are ready to move on to the next step, which is basically dropping in the receiver and setting up all the various connections. We have two more links that have to be set up into the rear for the uh, elevator and rudder. The wings and flaps are already done, so that's just a matter of wiring everything up and zeroing everything to the receiver. Shouldn't take much longer. Wiring up the Avios Bushmill V2 is a snap. One, the cables are long enough and well labeled. Look at that, they're all labeled up. I've already started the process. When I'm done, I'm gonna throw the receiver up in behind the wing or behind the panel up here. There's lots of room, an easy spot to put some Velcro, and that gets everything out of the way inside the bay. I like to clean up the wiring that way. If I'm dropping anything, it doesn't get cut off in any of the servo wires. If you have a proper 8-channel receiver, you're going to love using all 8 channels. And the reason for that is because the throttle for both ESCs is not on a Y-cable stock. So that means differential thrust. So that's pretty cool. So in my case, I'm going to run ailerons on a Y-cable on channel 1, elevators on a Y-cable channel 2, ESC number one on channel three, the rudder and the nose gear on channel four, the door on channel five, the flaps on a Y cable on channel six, channel seven will be the reverse for the both ESCs on a Y cable, and then channel eight will be the other ESC. So you're using up all eight ports, and the reason I like the FR Sky 
8 uh, X8R is I have other ports I can draw power off. The uh, the smart port, the S bus, or the RSSI feed will give me some kind of five volt voltage. So if I need to power the lights or anything like this, um, piece of cake. So there we go. Let's get wiring. Those guys are all hooked up. That's one packed, well set up receiver. All right, lights are on. I've got my green and red on the sides. I've got my landing or my forward lights and I got a blinking nav light on the top and that's coming off an extra port. So if you've got a full capacity receiver, you're set. Um, let's fly. Let's put some power to this thing and finish setting up the radio. So I've been doing a little programming behind the scenes with the radio and all I have to do now is hook up those elevator and rudder sections. I've got my flaps working and turn that down. I can go up and down. I've got my ailerons going correctly. And then I got my differential. I still have to do all the voice commands, but. Uh, sorry, don't have a different, my reverse, but I'll program in the differential and everything. There we go. That looks nice. Right? Up, down. Up, down. Full throws. Very cool. Lots of power. She's rolling really freely already, I've noticed. So we're almost done. Let's really go in, follow the specs as far as programming your radio and your rates and everything. I'm running 30 uh, thirty percent expo across everything because that's just how I like it. And I'll get in there and I'll fiddle with the weights and everything and, uh, and the values and also dialing a little bit of elevator down for when I uh, put the flaps, when I apply the flaps during uh, during flight. So the next part of this whole process is to slap a 4S pack in there. We'll mark my CG at 50 millimeters and then drop a 4S pack in there and see how the CG feels and everything. But the Bushmill V2 from Avios is almost ready for a good flight. I'm gonna use my caliper and 50 millimeters and I'm gonna find my, my marking and we'll go from there. I'm gonna actually go on the inside. I thought about going outside, but I get a more solid lift from the airplane on the inner wing. So I'm gonna do it on this side because then I can kneel down and see what I'm doing. It's a big plane. And 50 millimeters, I'll come around the other side, is just forward of the spar by the way it looks. 50 millimeters is gonna show up just in front of where that whole spar cap is. Uh, it's, it's really hard to demonstrate on a camera with landing gear and everything. But what I'm gonna do right now is without a battery, obviously it's gonna be tail heavy. Okay, and we're gonna spec this off flying with the 4S3000 and I'm gonna get an idea right away with the battery pretty well to the forward. And I'm gonna go underneath and find my line. And, well, what do you know? So that is with the 4S 3300 right to the nose, like basically where, right where that plate starts and finishes. Uh, hopefully that's showing up. Yeah, that's showing up. So my CG point at 50 millimeters on the line pretty well works out with that battery sitting like that. And I'm kind of curious to see how that works with the uh, 5000. Because I do like the 5000s, they're a really solid battery. Uh, these are the HBR, uh, HRB 5050C. So that would give me plenty of punch. All right, and that's with the canopy off, but I don't think the canopy makes much of a difference. All right, that's a little bit more nose weight in the front now, and that's not bad at all. I'm just getting my finger right on my mark. 
So that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Like I could actually, and depending on what the aircraft is doing, if I find that the tail is dragging or anything like that, wow, this thing really rolls well. Um, if it's dragging, like I said, I will move the battery around accordingly. So there we go. So basically I, it looks like as, you lo as long as you load that battery right on that point where that hard bracket is for the landing gear at front, uh, your CG is nice. So I'm probably gonna run mine with that bigger battery and just get more flight time. Because why wouldn't I? I'm Andre and this is the Avios Bushmill V2. Not a hard assembly. We've done this before with the V1. Follow those manual instructions. Set everything up. Program your radio. I'm using a nice e-channel receiver and using up all the ports. Like the fact that I'm going to have differential thrust, reverse thrust as well, and all kinds of craziness as far as the settings go. So I'm filling up every one of those ports and then some on the e-channel receiver. So you're going to want a good solid receiver pack in this aircraft. Good to start off flying off the 4S 3300s, move up to the 5000s, and then eventually I will. I do want to try the 3S packs and see how it slows down. Recommend balancing those props, and otherwise, it's a sweet looking airplane. Love the color. Really keen to see how that new landing gear works out, especially with reversing and everything. And as soon as I'm done this video, I'm actually going to be slapping on the skis because there's going to be so much snow when I go flying that it's going to need it. So I'm Andre. Abios Bushmill V2 from Hobby King. Thanks for watching.